Okay, these are the practice problems from the AccuPlacer placement test. The first section you get is on the elementary algebra section, and it consists of 12 questions, and you'll need to get about five or six of these right to move on to the next section. The first question is, if x equals negative 3 and y equals negative 4, what is the value of this expression right here? So I got this written up on paper and pencil here, and it says if x equals negative 3 and y equals negative 2, what is the value of negative 2y cubed over 3y minus 4x? Well, I substituted in the negative 2 and for the y right here, and I put parentheses around, so it would be negative 2 times the quantity, what is y? Negative 2, so I put the negative 2 in for y, and that gets cubed. That's over 3 times y, y is negative 2, so that would be 3 times negative 2 minus 4, minus 4 times x, and x is negative 3. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And 4 times a negative 3 is a negative 12. And minus a negative 12 is plus 12. So we have 16 over negative 6 plus 12 is 6. And 16 over 6 reduces to 8 thirds. And that's the answer to the first one. On the second problem, it says uh, the total area of the rectangular floor below is 2 over x. That's the whole thing, including the black area. And it says the area of the black tile is 3 over 2x plus 5. What is the area of the white tile? So in other words, we need to take this whole thing, 2 over x, and subtract off the area of the black area, 3 over 2x plus 5. So to do that, we have to get a common denominator. So here's the problem again written down, and we have to take that. Uh, area of the whole floor, 2 over x, minus the area of the black section, and that will give us the area of the outer section. So to subtract these, we've got to get a common denominator, and the common denominator will be x times 2x plus 5. And then what we do at this point, we say, what's in this common denominator that's not in here? Well, a 2x plus 5, and we need to take this 2 times that 2x plus 5. 2x plus 5. Minus... 3 times whatever in this common denominator that's not in this denominator, and that's an x. Now what we need to do is simplify this on top, take this 2 through, 2 times 2x is 4x, 2 times plus 5 is plus 10, minus this 3x will give us, uh, uh, this is over x times 2x plus 5. At this point, Combine like terms on the top, 4x minus 3x is x plus 10. So we have x plus 10 in the numerator, and x times 2x plus 5 in the denominator. And now we'll do it without one. If it would factor any farther on the top, I'd factor it and see if any like terms factored out. Okay, problem number three says 2x minus 1 is a factor of which of the following? Now it could be more than one, so let's see what we got here. First choice is this, 6x squared plus x minus 2. Well, this could factor into a, first I'll look to see if there's any common factor that factored out and there isn't. 6x squared could break into 6x and x or 2x and 3x. Let's go ahead and try 2x and 3x. Now this minus here says that the signs are different, a plus and a minus, and we need factors of 2. Well the factors of 2 would be 2 and 1. Now if I put the 1 here and the 2 here, that will give me a difference of 1, and that's what I'm looking for, a difference of 1. And I need it to uh, subtract to a positive 1x. So if I put the 2 here, a positive 2 here, that will give me the outer to be positive 4x, and the minus 1 here, that would give me a minus 3x. And if I foiled this together, yeah, I would get minus 1 times 2 is minus 2. And then here's a minus 3x plus 4x, which is a plus x. So is 2x minus 1 a factor of this one? Yes. Is it a factor of this one? Well, let's check. This breaks into 2x and x. Signs are different. One's plus and one's minus. And now we need factors of 4. That could be 2 and 2, or it could be 4 and 1. And it's actually 4 and 1. Because if we check our inner and outer, that would be x, and that's minus 8x, which gives me minus 7x. So that's what this factors into, but 2x minus 1 is not a factor of this one, 2x plus 1 is. So, so far it's just a. Let's check this one, a 5 factors out of this, and you're left with 4x squared minus 1. Now, 
Uh, again, you could check this by taking the 5 through. 5 times 4x squared would be 20x squared. 5 times minus 1 is minus 5. And now uh, break this down a little bit farther here. Let me do this right here. That would be 5 times. This is a difference of 2 squares, which breaks into 2x plus 1, the sum, and the difference, 2x minus 1. So 2x minus 1 is a factor of this one. So it's a factor of A and C. Okay, problem four says, what is the uh, value of this? The absolute value of negative one plus one and two thirds minus three and a half. Well, first of all, what I did was uh, minus one plus one and two thirds. Well, one and two thirds is two thirds higher than minus one. Just added these and I guess get two thirds. Then I switched minus three and a half over to an improper fraction. Two times three is six. Six plus one is seven. So that's minus seven halves. So that now at this point, I got two thirds minus seven halves. Common denominator between 3 and 2 is 6. 3 goes into 6 2 times. 2 times 2 is 4. Minus 2 goes into 6 3 times. 3 times 7 is 21. When I subtract these, I get the absolute value of negative 17, 6. And the absolute value makes that positive. So the answer would be 17, 6 or uh, 2 and 5, 6. So that would be the answer to that one, 2. Uh, 17, 6. Okay, on problem 5 it says uh, if negative 3x plus 5y equals 100 and x is between 5 and 11, that's what that, you read this as x is less than or equal to 11 and greater than or equal to 5, what is the least possible value for y? Well, the least possible value for y, looking at this x, the bigger number that I would put in for x makes the x more and more negative which means that the y has to be bigger and bigger and bigger. So if I want the least possible value for y, I better put in the smallest value of x. And we can try it. Let me put in a 5 in there for x. If I put the 5 in there, that would be negative 3 times 5 plus 5y equals 100. That's negative 15. If I add the 15 to both sides, I get 5y equals 115. And divide through by 5 and I get 23. If I try a bigger value in here for x, I'll get a bigger value that I would need for y. Like for example, let's say I tried 11 in there. If I tried 11 in there for x, I would get uh, negative 3 times 11 plus 5y equals 100. Well, this is negative 33, and if I add that to both sides, I get 5y equals 133 and 5 goes into 133 more than 5 goes into 115 so this is going to be a bigger number than what we got over here so uh, what is the least possible value for y right here 23 is the answer to that one okay on 6 it's uh, factoring and simplifying things you have to know that when you divide we have to invert and multiply so that's what I did to this I flipped the second fraction to get uh, 4m squared minus 8m over 9. Now I got to factor each of these. This one, a 3m factors out, and I factor out the 3m, I'm left with m plus 2 over 2m squared. And on this one, a 4m factors out, and if I factor out a 4m, I'm left with m minus 2. Now just cross off like terms. So for example, this uh, 3 divides into this 9 three times. These two m's make an m squared, we'll just cross off with this one, and the 2 goes into the 4 two times, so I'm left with, uh, on the top, 2, I'll just write it somewhere around here, 2 times m plus 2, m minus 2, all over, uh, on the bottom, all I have left is a 3. So that is, uh, can't hardly see that 3, but there's a 3 down there on the bottom. So I'll get a new sheet of paper, and we'll pick it up from there in just a second. Let me get a new sheet of paper here.